Hey everybody, this is Peter with Tabletop Gaming Guild, and today I'm going to be taking you through the Sagrada tutorial for the Digital Edition by Direwolf Digital. And it's going to be my first time playing Sagrada, so I'm looking forward to it. All I know is stained glass windows and dice. So let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial and see what this game's all about. All right. So welcome, in Sagrada you'll be placing dice to create a stained glass window for the famous Sagrada Familia Basilica. At the start of each round a number of random dice will be rolled. Those are nice. These dice represent the panes of glass needed to complete your window. So I'm seeing some numbers, I'm also seeing some colors on the window. It is your turn to select and place a die. You must place your first die along the edge of your window. Each window pattern is unique, containing some spaces with color or number restrictions. And that yellow six looks perfect for the yellow space. So we'll drag it up there, place it. All right, looks like I'm up against Anthony. Now your opponent will draft and place a die in his window. Players get two turns to place a die every round. After each player takes one turn, the round continues in reverse order, beginning with the last player placing their second die. After the first die has been placed, all other dice must be placed adjacent to a die already in your window. Alright, so two spaces. Okay. The space to the right of your yellow six needs a two of any color. You can't go wrong because I've just got two twos and they're both blue. At the end of the round, there will always be at least one die that hasn't been placed. It is moved to the round track, then the turn order changes and a new pool of dice are rolled. All right, so one die goes up there, indicating that round is done. And Anthony will start the new round. We got couple ones, two, and a five. A die can't share an edge with another die of the same color or number, meaning there is no place to put the yellow two. However, a die can share a corner with a die of the same color or number. So corners, yes. Adjacent, no. For same color or number. The five blue satisfies the requirement of the blue space on your window, so let's use it. It's your turn again. When you're the last to pick in a round, you get to take two turns in a row. Placing the blue five opened up new spaces. The one, the green one looks perfect for the green spot. Okay, into round two, going into round three. Five, four, one, three, one. You need a red die at the top of your window. Place the five in that space, okay? All right, so they're showing me something not to do. Playing the five red was legal, but not wise. You won't be able to play a five next to it later. Okay, so we're gonna hit the back button, undo that placement, choose another move Try to place a die in a spot that won't restrict you later. Um, something that won't restrict me later. So, no color requirements over here on the right, but there is a space for a three, so I can put this three there. When you're happy with the move, select the forward button to end your turn. player starts the game with a private objective. In this case, your private objective will award you points by adding the values of your yellow dice. Okay. And then additionally, each player scores points from a shared set of public objectives. Light shades, sets of one and two values anywhere. Color variety, sets of one of each color anywhere. And row shade variety, rows with no repeated values. Interesting. So I played a game recently. I played a uh, calico for the first time the other day I'm very much getting the same vibes from this that I got from calico um, 
and that when you're doing um, quilts and putting buttons on the quilts and there's cats and all that stuff so Alright, so let's see here. To view an objective again, hover your cursor over the icon. Okay, you've got this. Keep drafting and placing dice. The game ends and scores are tallied after 10 rounds. Alright, so let's go ahead and let's complete the tutorial. We'll go through the next 7-ish uh, rounds or so. Continue to see our goals here. Rows with no repeated values, that'd be interesting. Yellows. Sets of ones and two. All right, um, so I've got a red six, a red four, sorry. Draft a die and choose a destination four, yeah. I know, I'm going slow. So I can't do green here, but it needs to be a Adjacent. Um, go ahead and do that red four there. So I'm going to get to choose two in a row on this one. Uh, there's red five, but I can't put it here. Right. Um, I'm going to need a four here for sure. So I'll go ahead and do that. choices. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and put a four here. I still have to place another one, right? Oh, no, I don't. Never mind. Okay, so I still have to do that even though it's my turn again. I still have to indicate that I've finished placing it. Okay, I didn't realize that. So even though I go twice, I need to indicate that I'm going the second time by clicking the button. Um. Alright, so I've got... Two, four, six. I'm going to go ahead and take this. So I do need a five. Okay. 
What do you do when you don't like the dice? You use a tool. Players have access to three shared tools each game. Oh, this is interesting, okay. Grinding stone. Draft a die, then flip it to its opposite side. Six flips to one, five to two, four to three, etc. Eglomize brush. Move any one die in your window, ignoring color restrictions on your window pattern. You must obey all other placement and adjacency restrictions. And gro grousing, grousing flower, pliers, grousing pliers. Draft a die that increase or decrease its value by one. One may not change to six or six to one. Hmm. Well, they definitely just made this a little bit more interesting and complex. You really need a six to fill in your window. Select, uh, okay, it's down here. Draft a die to increase, so then there's the five. Make it a six. I'm assuming use it to fill that spot. Excellent. When using a tool, you spend favor tokens. More on favor tokens in the next tutorial. The first time a tool is used by any player, it costs one favor token. After that, it costs two favor tokens for all players. Well, that's really interesting. Okay. Um... I'm going to go ahead and put this two here. I do need a four. You can tap and hold anywhere on your window pattern to use the magnifying glass. It will allow you to examine the window pattern underneath your dice. What is it? You can tap and hold. You can tap and hold anywhere on your window pattern to use the magnifying glass. It will allow you to. Is this for like. Oh, okay, there we go. I just have to click and hold, click and hold. I got you. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay, so I'm just clicking with my left mouse button and holding it. That's cool. I mean, it's nice that they added that. Um, still need a four, but I might get one on the next next go around, maybe. Yeah, this thing doesn't like me. It, it feels like I'm taking too long, and I'm, I know I'm taking a while, but that's kind of the way I am when I'm playing a new game. Go for a three there. Plus it's another yellow, which is good for me. So that's 12, 15 just in the yellow dice. All right, so I can't use this four. Move one die in your window, ignoring color restrictions. On... No, okay, so I don't want to do that. Draft to die, flip it to its opposite side. Three becomes a four, place the four. Uh, my turn again. They got a lot of the ones and twos on Antony. 
I'm assuming for this thing here. Um, I still need... Yellows are good for me. So maybe I can place... This yellow floor here. Those ones and twos like that count, but we'll do that. This is the final round. Don't forget that you can use the tool to help change the dice if necessary. I say it does. Move any one die in your window, ignoring color restrictions on your window pattern. Not sure that that's going to do what I want it to do. Yeah, that didn't do what I wanted to do, so forget that. I'm just going to take that and put it there. These dice won't work for your window. Use a tool or end your turn. Nope, see that still didn't work. that can't do that no, I'm just gonna end my turn actually confirm so I don't know what kind of negative I'm gonna get for not having filled my window because I didn't fill this one spot here but we'll see congratulations on finishing your window you score one point for each leftover favor token Next, you'll earn points for each of the public objectives. All right, so I'm already losing there. All right, so that's what I was shooting for. I was shooting for the row shade variety, and I did well there. Then you earn objectives for your private objectives here in the sum of the values of the yellow dice in this game. And then finally you lose one point for each empty space on the board. Oh, that's not too bad. Just one point. I'm gonna handle that. You're ready to apply what you've learned to create more beautiful windows. You'll encounter new window patterns, tools, and scoring objectives in the following games. Good luck. Yeah, so, okay, so that reminds me a lot of Calico. Again, it's, uh, we're drafting, we're drafting dice, and uh, we have set objectives according to our boards, you know, certain places that you can place different colors and or numbers. 
uh, and then obviously the public objectives and the private objectives, which I think is cool. So, and then, oh, look, it just says you can view the windows. You can kind of go back here, look at both windows together. All right, so that is the tutorial for Sagrada, and uh, I think I'll probably play a game versus uh, AI here in the next little bit. Uh, you know what? Let's just go ahead and do it now. Let's go ahead and they've got a campaign mode, a solo mode, a pass and play mode, and a versus AI mode. So let's go ahead and do a versus AI. You can do two, we can do three, we can go up to four players, easy, normal, hard. Let's go ahead and throw in a third player and let's do that on normal. All right, so let's go ahead and dive on in to a three player normal. We're gonna choose a window pattern to play. Shades of yellow, some of yellow, some of values on yellow dice. Lux Ostrum, Symphony of Light, Aurora Sagradas, and Luz Celestial. Um, so it looks like, I don't know, if favor tokens, difficulty. Oh, so maybe if it's tougher, you get more? favor tokens that's interesting um let's try the aurora sagradas lothkin move exactly two dice obeying all placement restrictions copper foil burnisher move any one die in your window ignoring value restrictions on your window pane pattern you must obey all other placement and adjacency restrictions and running pliers after your turn first turn immediately draft a die skip your next turn this round so there's yeah so there's different tools for each game uh, different windows for each game so a lot of replayability medium shades sets of threes and four values anywhere color variety sets of one of each color anywhere and light shades sets of one and two values anywhere confirm and then what is my private objective that's right it was the yellows again miguel and garcia all right so let's see here so i've got starting out here on the edges uh threes and fours ones and twos so i'm just gonna go ahead and grab this six garcia's turn garcia then goes the second time I don't know if it makes sense to start like in a corner. I obviously didn't do that. All right, so. Let's go ahead and throw a two up here. We're gonna need a two. Twos and threes are good, or no, threes and fours, that's what it was, threes and fours. Uh, twos and ones, let's know what, uh, I can't do a two there. Three I can do there, though. See, that's tough, My because my yellows score me. Let's go ahead and put the three up there. That'll be fine. Fill that in. So we got three and four. 
there for them. Ooh, it's a lot of it's a lot of sixes. Uh, we'll go with a green. A green six. Sure, why not? pick it up it will highlight the areas that it's at least allowed to go all right I'm gonna take that red too still fairly uncertain about this game is like seeing the grander picture I guess This three where I want a three. Eight blues, threes, fours. Let's go ahead and grab a four and put it there. So it's at least going to be next to a three when I get a three there. So if I do that, no, 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 obeying all restrictions, I can't have a yellow and yellow, that's right, never mind. Shoot, no, no, no. Don't want to do that. It's going to throw off that four there. That would have been bad. Let's see. Can I do that? No, nope, because it still has to be a two. That doesn't help anything there. Let's try moving that. No. Oh. Because I can't put them anywhere. I still have to obey all the restrictions. See? That was bad. <laughs> I still ended up putting a purple where I won't be able to put another purple when I need to. Yeah, 
so this purple four here really I messed that up okay a tool and I moved some dice. I don't know how much that's going to help, but I did the thing, so... now that I'm trying to keep my uh, numbers so that they're not overlapping in a or not having more than the one number in a row and that's not even one of the <laughs> it's not even one of the the things that's carry over from the tutorial yeah so that was unnecessary the way I was playing it so far which is funny and fine took that that tool down there and that running pliers and use that all right so I still need I've got a three space that I need to fill and I've got a two space that I need to fill I can't put the that there I'm gonna go ahead and grab this three that I need to fill. Um, I'm gonna do that running pliers thing again and grab that one. and fours next to each other. So let's go ahead and do that then. And four, five. Go one there. to get a two on this next to the last round. Last round, Let's see how it goes. 
Oh, there's a few twos. That's good. That's real good. Um, so I can put this two here. Alright. And that two there. So I filled in all my spaces. So that's good. At least I filled in all the spaces. All right. I have no idea if that was well done or not. Let's see what happens. Got some threes and fours. Not a ton though. All right, so I, I got second place. Not terrible, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I feel like I'm getting the hang of the game. It's remembering to... Uh, <laughs> I got to remember what is the... Uh, what is the, what are the rules? What are the public? I'm gonna play it again. I'm gonna play it again because I think I'm, I'm starting to get the hang of it. So in this one, I'm going for shades of blue. Um, let's go for maybe an easier one down here with the Luz Celestial, which I'm assuming that's why it's gonna give me yeah, we get favor tokens and difficulty level changes. I'm going to go with an easier one this time. Slightly easier. The tools, again, change. Flux remover. Draft a die, then swap it for a new die from the supply. Choose a value and place the new die, obeying all placement restrictions, or return it to the draft pool. Blazing Hammer, re-roll all dice in the draft pool. Oh, that's interesting. This may only be used on your turn, on your second turn before drafting. And Blathe can move exactly to obeying all placement restrictions. Okay, and then public objectives. This is the thing. Okay, so row shade variety. Got that one again. I thought we had that last time, but no. Shade variety. Sets of one of each value anywhere. Shades? Sets of one of each value anywhere. I'm not sure I understand exactly what that's saying. So just like... Okay, all right. Um, and then deep shades, sets of five and six values anywhere. Confirm, okay. Very, very interesting. So, I'm going to start by grabbing this six. Oh, I can't, I can't, ah, oh, shoot, that's right, I can't start. So where do I want to start that one? Because I want the six. Might as well start off strong, right? But I can't start off that right corner because there's a blue square there. Don't want to start here because there's a six right there. Fives and sixes are good, so let's put it there. So it's next to where I need to put a five. Sure. They grabbed a five. They grabbed a five. Oh, and a six. So they've already got one set. Uh, three and twos. Let's go ahead and grab this red three here then, drop it there. All right, so they left me a five, but it's a blue five, so that does not work. Uh, I 
could grab the blue five and place it down here, but that won't be near to a six. So I could place anything I want kind of here. So I could go there, one of those two places, one of those two places. Hmm. So I'm going to put the one here. All right, my turn again. I'm not in love with these. Just set a die here. Um, this, this one, this shade variety, I'm still not sure I understand what they're saying. Sets of one of each value anywhere. Gives me the example. Sets of one, so that's just like, they're just off by one? I'm gonna pick up this four, I think. You know, I kinda, I kinda want this five. Maybe I can place. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna put it there. Let's see what happens. So you guys are probably watching this and thinking like he could be doing this better, is my guess. <laughs> um, so again, no sixes. On the dice. Let's see. There are fives though, so maybe I grab one of these fives, place it here. Yeah, let's do that. So I've got a yellow, yellow six, four, green, one blue. Reroll all dice in the trample. It's only going to reroll two dice, so I don't love that. Draft a die, then swap it for a new die from the supply. Choose a value and place the new die obeying all placement. Interesting. So just to test that out, 
I'll say I select that, but then I want to do that. So just try that out and see, see if that helps. Okay, my turn. So we're just about halfway, yep, halfway through the game. Six and a five, six and a five. Man. Oh wait, no. Nope, that doesn't work. That's not what I wanted to do. Um, so I really needed... I can't put a two there anyways. One. Oh, does a three work there? Alright, 
we're almost done. Just two more rounds to go. Twos. I know I need a two here. I'm gonna need a purple up here. One or a three up here. I'm hoping to get all my rows without repeating numbers if possible, and I think I'm pretty close. Try to re roll and hopefully get a one. Come on, one. I did not get a one. <laughs> I think I got pretty much the same thing. Oh man. Alright. Well, that stinks. I almost had all rows here. That would have been 20 points. Um, so I can only use the five, it looks like, to fill this space. That's it, that's the game. So I definitely still don't think I understood the other public objective there for the, so I had one rows with no repeats. That's gonna be, yep, 15 points there. So that was good. Sets of each value anywhere. I guess that was okay. Fives and sixes, I thought I did pretty good with the fives and sixes. personal objectives got some good blues yeah no empty windows wow okay so I did pretty good there um, I wish I understood that one objective a little bit better for some reason I was having a hard time understanding exactly what that was looking for but as you can see I won anyway so that's good so uh, I like this this is a good game um, like I said, I'm definitely feeling a little bit of Calico as I'm playing it, but that's just because I played Calico this last weekend. Um, I like the windows. I think it's pretty. Um, obviously, I'm assuming you... I don't know, there's like a good amount of... You'd almost think that there'd be some kind of other light lightness to it or something. I don't know, but it's it's very nice. I do, I do like it. I wish I could zoom out to see all three a little bit better now that there are three windows, see them all at the same time. Uh, but yeah, so that's Sagrada, everybody. Uh, it's a, it turned out to be a slightly longer video than I expected. I thought I was just going to do the tutorial, but the tutorial sucked me in well enough that I wanted to play around, and it plays so quickly. I was like, well, I, I lost. I, let's try again. And the you know second time was the charm. I won that second game. Uh, but if you like this, if you like this kind of game, I like the replayability factor with the, you get to choose your different, uh, different little tableaus, uh, you get to choose, you, get, you have different tools that you can possibly utilize throughout the game, but I like the favor aspect, you get favors depending on the difficulty of your tableau, and if you have some of those left over, those are going to be points. I like the different public objectives. I like that everybody's got their own private objective. Um, in the private objectives, all I ever saw were like different colors. And so maybe that's all there is on the private objective is that you're shooting for specific colors. Um, I think the tools aspect was the one thing I really wasn't expecting. 
um, it was kind of like a, a neat twist and that the tools change from time to time. So I don't know how many total tools there are in the game, uh, sending as I haven't played it a ton of times, but uh, I'll be interested to continue playing it, keep seeing how it, uh, how it plays and what the different tools and public and personal objectives might look like. So yeah, so everybody, that was Sagrada uh, from Direwolf Digital, the digital adaptation of it, and you can find that on Steam. And I am Peter from Tabletop Gaming Guild, where we just continue to make videos all about uh, board games, digital board games, RPGs. We review uh, tabletop accessories from different companies. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like and check out some of the other videos. And we hope to see you in the comments. Everyone, until we talk again, keep playing games.